Okay, coconut. Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet text and all the people come on down to watch the show. We are I see our beautiful faces. Oh, look We're at us. the public. We're letting the people know. <laughs> We're letting the people know. Spread it. Tell all of your friends, all 18 of you, tell a friend and they'll tell their friends and then we'll have an excellent party today. So that we can be friends. So we can be friends with your friends and Indeed. our friends. Again. We sound and desperate, you guys. <laughs> We're not desperate. We just really need more friends. We just really I need more friends. I was referencing a song. Yeah. Um, okay, I was just sweet. keeping it real. Yeah, keep it real. Keep it straight. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. I am really excited for tonight because, as you can see, we have somebody very, very special joining in us. Say hello, Josh. Hi. How's it going? Hello, Josh. Yeah, hello. Jo Josh and I have been talking about this for like four or five months, so I'm glad we can finally have you on the show. If it hasn't been longer than that. Oh, it's it's been enough time that I've forgotten. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the oh, time damn. that was forgotten. But yeah, I am super excited, obviously, for this episode tonight. We had a really, really big one um, last time. Oh, we and sure yeah, I'm still Oof. reeling. Wingo, bingo, bango. Uh, we're getting towards the end of this arc. So I guess let's get this started. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Celeste Conowich, and I will be your dungeon master. I'm Brittany Quintero, and I play your moon elf warlock that's not dead yet. <laughs> Arna not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> and I am Nassim, playing your human monk, Cyanor. And I am Sage, your inspired barbarian, <sighs> Cara Brynhilda. And I am your guest player today, Josh Perot, and I'll be playing Randy. Just Randy. That's all Just you Randy. get. That's what you get for now. You have to find out. Sit around. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, information to pull. But uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of information that we have to pull out of our brains. I'm sorry, Josh. You won't really be able to help, or maybe you will. Uh, the, the recap <laughs> from I can last make up. episode. Yeah. You know what happened? <laughs> what happened, Josh? You have to do the recap of what I'll happened. Play yourself. <laughs> okay, so what happened last episode? No, no, no. All right, everybody, what happened last time? Come on. Some serious shit. Oh, yeah. boy, we shit were... I feel like that was out. that's been the first thing said in the past three episodes. <laughs> yeah, some serious you shit. You know what? We've just been going through some serious shit. It we has gotten better. <laughs> this dungeon was terrible in so many ways. And we were in the last room, the Charisma Challenge, which, of course, is all our strong suits. <laughs> yep. It was We're mine. Not racist That's... at all. <laughs> I, I'm chariz I have charisma for days, you guys. For days. So nice. So Still nice for you. And what did charisma? Yeah, and what did you do with it? I killed myself. <laughs> what, 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 whoa escalated wow, quick okay wow. that's jumping like the whole first half of the episode what happened in that oh challenge? and the charisma with the um with the ghosts that's right sorry that yes, was that we was... were in a room full of ghosts who were encroaching in on our personal space a whole lot. Me. Just... and oh yeah, they the they were pulling one. you into the ground like what was that movie with Robin Williams and he went into his wife's Jurassic, painting? Not Jurassic World. Jumanji? <laughs> no. Jurassic Park with no. Robin Williams. His wife committed suicide and he had to go to hell to get her out of there. He literally travels what? to hell. I know what you're talking about. I'm I have not, no idea. not sure what it's called. It I've might be called that. Inferno. It's based no, on... It's, off it's to like, Google I go. <laughs> Drag me to hell. <laughs> there's a scene Ghost where somebody's Ghost. like, there's like a sea of faces and they're stuck in the ground and that's what was happening to Zaya. What, what dreams may come. That's it. What dreams yeah. may come. Oh, perfect. Well then. So we, so we, it was that movie happened. So and I was happened. Robin Williams and dreams may come. He, was... Robin Williams saved the Venture Maidens. Yeah. And... Thank God. Yeah, you Robin Williams. No, those ghosts were freaky. They like were basically trying to shake our confidence with the whole 
purpose of being in this horrible fucking dungeon. And it, like, they were spinning some truth that we we're kind of willing to, like, and then, you know, I think Kara was the only one. Both, no, I rolled a natural 20 on my charisma save. And then Kara was also like, fuck you, auntie. You're not my auntie. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, um, an elven woman appeared before you, right? And she was like, I've been trapped here and so will you. And then Kara's aunt appeared before her and was like, I died here. You're going to die here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, but it was... like, we kind of low key believed them. Uh, like Brittany was kind of, I was like, uh, mm -hmm. shit, that kind of like legitimately sounds like a thing that is probably happening. <laughs> What was the uh, what what did Saya see? Who what did, a ghost appeared before her? A monk boy, a monk boy, the monk boy, or a named boy. Thomas. That's right, yeah. and he yeah. And, and he... I basically believed him and failed my I guess my second charisma check or went the first time I had to make one. You after failed an insight check and then you failed insight. a charisma save and then mm -hmm. you failed that's another right. charisma save. Oh yeah, because you, oh yeah, that's And right. Arnadel pretty much whipped me out of it through- The uh, power of friendship. Yeah, yeah, the power of friendship and a natural 20. She yeah. Oh, that's what the natural 20 was. Face. That's right. Yeah, uh, pulled me by the face and uh, snapped me out of it along with Kara and like, yanked me out of the floor. Yeah, yeah, we Isn't did. How it went? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then you formed a hug unit, a hug <laughs> unit, and hug defeated unit the ghost. Squad, walk. squad walked. Yes. Also, I just gotta shout out to um, the space hamster Boo for making the funniest thing I've ever seen pop up in the sh in the chat for that. <laughs> he was like, he said something along the lines of like, "We form a hug unit as the ghosts form a horror unit." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the timing units. was perfect. If you gotta like check it out on twitch but anyway yeah the, the yeah, and ghosts became a horror unit <laughs> mm -hmm. and then eventually you made it out of the room and then what happened Brittany? Mm. well I, we're missing a key thing which is going to raise some questions for me later oh, but yes. arnadel yeah. arnadel does not going to know this unless sage or kara tells her um kara hears rem's voice in her head to get the yeah. fuck out of that room yeah that's yep. kind of a big deal i feel like that's a big deal Somehow. Whoa. Yeah. Like, think about it. But we right. went right into the room. We did, yeah. Because Kara was like. the hell out of a ghost. Yeah, she yeah, did. She did. That was great. That was epic. It's really pretty weird. much as soon as we got into the final chamber or room, there was what looked like the knife that mm -hmm. we were there for sitting in the middle of the room. And Kara and I were both like, all right, Arnadel, I guess this is pretty much your thing from, night from here. It sure was. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we did. We didn't mean for that to be such a, a dramatic moment. I didn't either. Yeah. But when it like I I don't know the writing on the wall or the pillar, whatever that the dais. It was on the knife, wasn't it? No, it, it was, was the around dais. the surrounding the knife. Like basically, when yeah. she stepped, she did some checks to make sure it wasn't like rigged, and she yeah. steps up and she re you know the writing illuminates as she steps up to it, and she literally was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's only one way out, and this is it. So she turns around and says sorry and plunges it into her chest. Yeah. Were you then... looking at us when you did that? That's so fucked up. <laughs> no. She, well, yeah, of course. She, like, loves the fuck out of you guys. She she apologized. She was like, I'm sorry. This is the only way, and then did it. I mean, she probably said it wrong. more dramatically than the way I just casually said it. You know, there would have been, it would have, she had tears <laughs> in her eyes, right? Like, yeah. could you, like, just, you know, I'm not that great of an actress. I'm not a great actress at all. So I'm just like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then what happened? Uh, you, what happened was you a made lot her of roll anger. a medicine check. Yes, I did. That... I didn't leave that in the podcast because that was very macabre. <laughs> was yeah. Like, wow. Way to make me suffer. Took out a rib. I mean, I didn't you know, suffer. You're stab I yourself died in the immediately. Heart and die instantly. Yeah, you gotta aim. Yeah, yeah. Blood yeah. Out. She true. has extensive knowledge of anatomy from her 150 years cloistered in a tower. <laughs> no, you did great. You did great, kid. You killed you, it. Mm. You did it. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, and then everything kind of melted away, and we found ourselves in front of the uh, the the elders. Keepers. And their stupid chairs. They're stupid. And they're stu 
Bridge sitting chairs, and they're smugly. like, oh, good job, you did it. Oh, And bravo. they're like, you can take the knife and pointing <laughs> stuck in your <laughs> yeah, dead companion. <laughs> Excuse me, Kara went up to him and just like silently just wiped the blood on his robe and like, this shit's on you. Mm. Wow. Oh, that was ballsy as up. fuck. I yeah. loved that. And then Sawyer, what did you do? You did some fucked up shit too. I, I also, oh shit. I also, fuck. Uh, my delivery man is here. Oh. Um, I have, Fine. I am so sorry. Go get I will food. call him in a second. But I also went up to Breeza and like Breeze. Breeze. threatened her. To, well, not really threatened, but I grabbed her by her collar and said, bring Arnadelle the fuck back. And okay, chucked her across the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chucked her across the room. She fell yeah. out of her chair. Yep. And then what happened? And then Rem bust through and was like, hold up, and then restored Arnadel to life mm-hmm. and was like, I need to have some words with these individuals. Why don't all of you kindly walk down the mountain and I'll meet you later? And we're like, oh, okay, boss. All right. Okay. You do you. <laughs> See you at the bottom. Although I couldn't do or say much. I was in a lot of pain and yeah. Um, yeah. At, still at one HP. Mm-hmm. Kara carried you down the mountain on her back. Yep. Very symbolic. It was beautiful. Uh, yep, and then Rem came and joined you, and you all got to the bottom. We set up camp. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, I know a guy who we'll be meeting tomorrow, but I'm sure you guys have some stuff you want to talk about, so I'm just gonna leave. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then Kara and Arnadel had a very heartwarming and heartfelt conversation. And uh, Arnadel, don't forget, Rem told you something Um, particular to keep in mind. Yeah, she can only do that once. So, I mean, there aren't very many times where Arnadel's, like, trying to fucking off herself. So, I don't (laughs) think she's going to need another time. At least in that arrogance, (laughs) young PC. No, 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 not at all. I that was a very you know like level nine now, so whatever. (laughs) Nobody, nobody intends to die (laughs) in a boss battle, but like that was a very intentional death. So she totally gets it. Yep, not gonna do that again. Um, but yeah, the conversation with Kara was like we reached new levels of friendship. (laughs) It's so magic. It's so magical. Oh um, but God. Arnadel definitely noticed that Saya wasn't around, and she's like, oh, fuck, okay. That, that's a... Saya is really mad at Arnadel yeah. for not talking about who should sacrifice himself first. Yeah, but Arnadel's like, uh, there was no conversation uh, to be had. Yeah. Sorry, that's not something to... No, nope, we're not going to discuss it. Are you kidding? Hell no. Yeah. Yeah. But you turned out to be okay, so it's kind of hard to be mad when you're I think not dead. I think um Saya is more upset that she uh she let Arnadel do that. Or like that nothing she couldn't do anything about it. I can see that. Uh, Per se drawing from conversations that Nasim and I had after after the yeah. pod- we needed to talk about it we've had oh, conversations sure. like post podcast because that was such a gripping episode um anyway i guess nasim said that she's on her way back i hope so because we gotta get this party started guys oh man well yeah let's let's recap what this part of the mission is do you guys remember what you're doing here we're going to find <laughs> well we need a we need Somebody to lead us through the Fey Wild so we can get to the gate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then use the knife and shed the blood and get of through the, the gate. To King. shed the blood of Ravenkind. Of Ravenkin. <laughs> Ravenkin. <laughs> yeah. And then... Which we're like, Rem, I guess that's you. She's here, so apparently. <laughs> yeah. But she also yep. needed to escort us through that whole situation. I'm sad that Nassim, or that uh, Sai is upset with Rana, because I don't think... I've been thinking about oh that. Oh my god, and Rana's... Yeah. I don't think Rana go. knew, because he's only been through the dungeon, so he doesn't know what the ulterior motives of the leaders are, you know? Like, he's also a pawn in that scheme. I, 
right. I, I mean, think... yeah, but he's a really high up Corellin as well. And the fact that he doesn't remember getting through, but yeah. I mean, but... he knew that it was like, I mean, who knows? Maybe if, if one, I don't know. Maybe your memory, I don't know. I, I, I think Arnadel's probably not going to ha- harbor ill feelings towards Rana. She'll probably, she probably just feels neutral about it. She's just like, oh yeah, that dude. Um, where's he at? <laughs> Somebody in chat last time was like, R.I.P. Rado. Like, <laughs> I, <saw that. laughs> I mean, it depends on, I feel like it depends on what Rana's um, actions will be after this. If he yeah. chooses to stay a Corellan or if he leaves the organization, I think that will speak volumes. Yeah. Well, what our continual relationship with him will be. Yeah. Hmm. I we have so many questions that need to be answered because I'm like wait a second I thought this... I would also yeah I would also like to know why Rana became a Karelian in the first place right like and that, that would be a neat thing to learn yeah what their fucking motivations are like they're clearly not just there to keep the Fey borders safe like there's after that whole thing there's clearly more going on yeah there's something else yeah that's some funky shit. That's why I think um, the ghost situation was really interesting because, like, that sounded pretty, like, oh, well, shit. Like, okay. If what he situation? stayed in the room while Rem had her murder time. Oh, that's a good question. Did Rana stay in the room while Rem murdered? Ooh. Or spoke... Well, we'll call it diplomacy. Diplomacy. We don't know if anybody got murdered. There was just a diplomatic conversation. Exactly. Strong words. It's just very strong words for everybody, is what it was. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. (gasps) There's a Nassim. Sweet. Sweet. Here we go. (gasps) Oh my gosh, we're ready. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, where we left off last time... All of you had recovered from this sort of shocking, harrowing experience or recovered as much as you could with like a good night's rest. And Rem had told you all that, yeah, you probably would like some time to heal from that, but we don't have it. We need to keep moving right now. Uh, And she had explained to you that your next stop is to pick up the guide that the Sisters of Sorrow have located to take you into the wilds to reach the gate that the the sisters warned you about. So you are currently on the road. You set off really early in the morning. You have the wagon, you have the horse. Um, What's everybody's general configuration? Uh, Rem lets you know it's probably only a three or four hour ride to your destination. I'm certainly going to be bundled up in the wagon trying to regain as much HP as possible. You have all your hit points back because, you know, mechanics are funny. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. But I still feel shitty. Like, that yeah. hurts. Yeah. It'd probably take a while. Like, I'm going to feel bruised and, mm-hmm. like, your sore. hurts. The internal things stitching themselves back together. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. That would probably feel weird. Yeah, and what and are... <laughs> Kara and Saya doing? Kara would drive the cart. I'd probably be sitting up there with you then. Yeah. And Rem is just kind of walking along beside. Uh, and again, Rem is, is very quiet, seems very focused on the destination. Uh, every once in a while she just chimes in to say, you know, take a right, take a left. Mm-hmm. Uh, essentially, as, as you get away from Ashtar, uh, the roads become more and more sparse. As you can see, you are heading in the direction of that jungle-esque tree line towards the wild. So wherever you're going, it's close by to the border of this place. And so you officially make your way off of like a nice paved road and go onto a dirt street. And this happens around like hour three or so. Uh, and then you can see that there is a small village in the distance that you seem to be making your way towards. Mm, cool. <laughs> Yeah, and all of this area here, it's all largely flat land, flat grassy land. You can see that there are farms you've passed by that have dotted the area. And this village coming up in front of you uh, seems to be another one of these kind of rural uh, communities you see of just like barn houses dotting the fields around. Uh, And Rem says that you are headed towards the village of Little Wheat. How cute. Little Wheat. Little Wheat to meet your guide. Um, 
anything that happens over the course of the three hours? Any conversations you want to have, or oh, yeah. is it all sort of oh, yeah. okay? Um, I'm assuming at some point Rem will probably hop in the wagon or will stop to like water the creatures that are pulling it um, in our journey. And Arnadel's going to want to kind of look at Rem a little bit more dis with the uh, discerningly. And she's going to ask Rem if uh, she's like, I didn't know you. I didn't know you knew cleric spells. I don't. Well, how? Uh, forgive me if this is maybe too scholarly, but how did you? It's complicated. Does this have something to do with the Raven Queen? No. What I am, well, sort of. I suppose we are related, but our powers aren't the same. Do you Let's want just say? I, I have a strong connection to death. And sometimes I can use that to uh, prevent that from happening. Um, she she still looks like you probably, Rem probably, I mean, Rem might be able to read her face, but Arnadel's kind of like, uh. <laughs> but she just calmly yeah. is like, am I undead? That's no. what Kara wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, God, no, of course not. No, no, no. I don't, I can't, or I, well, I could. No, you're not undead. And then and her... she's looking at you and she's like furrowing her brow, like doesn't seem to know how much or how little to tell to me. Tell you. Yeah. Ardell's going to ask one last question. And her okay. question is uh, after like a long pause, like, cause she's debating on whether or not she wants to ask this or not. Um, mm -hmm. her last question is, am I the same as before? Do you feel the same as before? Not right now, but, you know, I, it still hurts. In all the ways that you're aware of, you are the same. But your spirit... It takes a great amount of trauma to pull a spirit from one place to the other. That is fragile now. So, and will never fully recover. Ah. Uh, so... My normal um, progress as an elf is, is probably not... <laughs> you, as long as you're not you know, gambling away your soul or doing anything completely outrageous, you should be fine. Uh, okay. Unless, of course, you have any bright ideas like trying to do that again. Oh, no, no, no. Um, no. I just, I figured, you know, I was thinking about all the stuff that I know about these kind of things, and it, a lot of things weren't making sense. So uh, that answers my many questions. Can we hear this conversation? It's just happening in the wagon behind us. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> Can I, can Are I you guys doing the right thing here? where you're like peeking yeah, around? Yeah, kind of <laughs> leaning back. Yeah, like, well, like, because mm -hmm. the, the wagon's covered, isn't it? Like, so, like, there's a barrier between us. Yeah, but there's like a window, like a cabbie window, right? Go, go ahead and make perception rolls to see mm -hmm. if you if you hear this. <laughs> Natural one. Oh, oh, good. Oh, starting this off again. Damn. Eighteen. All right, uh, you don't hear anything, Saye. Kara, you do hear this conversation. Uh, Much wind in my ears. Yep. <laughs> and um, Rem says to you, Arnidel, um, it's what I am and what I can do. It isn't. It isn't something you're possible uh, of understanding. You simply can't comprehend all of it, and I wouldn't wish you to. I will do my best to answer mm. your questions, but the less you know, probably the better off you are. Yeah. Mm. I've, there's definitely been um, books that I've read that I wish I hadn't, so um, I'll take your advice on that and just let it go. But I'm yeah. sure whatever I need to know, you'll let me know, and, and we'll leave it at that. Just judge me by my cover. <laughs> and she awkwardly smiles and is like... <laughs> 
it. <laughs> that was stupid. Okay. <laughs> she just, uh, she lies back down and, and just kind of like blankly stares at the ceiling of the wagon. Uh, Kara leans over to Salye at one point and is like, oh, so I was kind of worried. But I guess Arnadel's not a, isn't a zombie. Because if she was a zombie, that would be a problem. <laughs> oh, Probably yeah. pretty noticeable by the smell, or you know, yeah, it's only been like eight hours. <laughs> oh no! Martinel just smells worse and worse as time goes on. Saya, <laughs> Saya doesn't want to. <laughs> Basically, she's acting like like she knows that already. Like, oh yeah, obviously she wasn't a zombie. We would know that already. <laughs> God, that wasn't so cool. also figure that out for herself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and as this conversation is kind of winding to an, an end, you're pulling up much closer down to this village. And you see that uh, the, on the outlying side of it, there's this large farm. Uh, that looks like it's got this cute little house and a large barn connected to all these fields with grass in the area. And as you're approaching along this road, you see that there are a group of people uh, standing at what looks like the mailbox sort of like the distance from the house like on the road uh, and you see a bunch of these people they're dressed in pretty utilitarian work clothes um, like they were in the middle of doing doing some farming or something people with carts have stopped around there there are a couple horses and there just seems to be mm -hmm. this big group of people and at the center of this group there are two individuals one is uh, a very elderly gentleman who's got these like wiry wisps of like gray hair that's sort of patchy and he's stooped over and he looks like a real like salt of the earth like i i've been alive forever and i will continue to exist out of pure spite is the only way you can <laughs> mm. really describe him and he is squared off with josh why don't you go ahead and describe yourself Sure. So what you see is a fur bulg with dark blue Ooh. faded white fur. Uh, the clothing on him is uh, like kind of cloth work um, or patchwork rather. Uh, very baggy cloth pants, worn leather boots, uh, loose fitting open leather vest. So you see like his bare uh, blue and white chest uh, and a wide brim straw hat and a leather side bag. Uh, he is rather tall, uh, about seven and a half feet tall, uh, around about very lanky. Um, and yeah, you see him kind of uh, in a little bit of dismay uh, at the moment. Yeah, it definitely seems just general read on the situation. It seems like all of these farmers uh, don't have great feelings about what's happening in the middle. And you begin mm. to hear this, this man in the center uh, and you see he's got this large uh, pitchfork that he's swung around and he's hitting this fur bulk in the chest, like just like punctuating words, and you hear him cry out, That was my prized bluegrass. How dare you, boy? What do you have to say for yourself? Boy? It? What are you? Oh, hell no. Well, my name is Randy, and I was very hungry. And last I checked, that grass and anything that grows is good for consumption from really anyone. So I was just having my fill. I am sorry if I offended you in any way offended uh, i was gonna sell that prized grass that was my livelihood oh my and you come in here and you eat this who invited this this thing into the town nobody wants you here anyway and you begin to hear some cries from other people like yeah what are you get out of here uh, i'm i've i think i've been called a fur, a fur bulge fur, fur bulge i think is the name i'm not sure i oh, wasn't always hmm it's an interesting this Interesting like, kind story. of lump woman pushes forward and she's like, We've heard quite enough of this. Just let's just take it down already. And, yes, please, and... that would be great. God, as soon as the voice popped out of your mouth, I just I imagine oh you wearing God. Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. That's so this fucking is funny. happening. Yeah, and the wagon is growing closer. Uh, is there anything you all would like to do? It seems that Rem is directing the wagon uh, towards this mass of people. Uh -huh. And she's like, uh, I think that's him. <laughs> the blue one. Oh, I'm gonna, great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up, like, fucking not, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a lady of few words these days. She's gonna get up, like, leap out of the wagon and beeline it. 
with purpose to mm-hmm. the person holding the pitchfork. <clears throat> yeah, and Rem Rem falls in beside you. And, and as some people in the crowd begin to notice, like your wagon pulling up, some heads are turning and they're like, oh, oh what? what? I'm walking, like marching to this mm-hmm. person with the with the pitchfork and I'm going to grab it really forcefully and shove it out of the guy out of uh Randy's face and I'm oh, gonna hello. the person the person holding the pitchfork and I'm gonna be like you look like a fucking bully <laughs> and not Excuse making me. not breaking any eye contact like I'm trying can I do an intimidation check yeah definitely <laughs> oh god damn Arnadel is a woman of business man. oh it's business time you guys <laughs> he has got no fucking patience for anything um, and it's, oh shit, that's going to be an unnatural 20. Oh yeah. Okay. So you can just come charging out of nowhere and people just step aside as you are like making your way through and they're looking at all of you, like your weapons and you're all wearing armor. And so clearly these town people are like, oh my God. So you get to the center here <laughs> and this old man was like focused on his pitchfork. And as you smack it out of his hands, he just sort of looks up at you stunned like nothing like this has ever happened to him before cool and he goes he's like his eyes go wide he's like "Uh, now that i have his attention i'm gonna say you can grow some more fucking grass (laughs) and i'm gonna take the i'm gonna wrench it out of his hands and throw it on the floor and look over at the fur bulg and uh and then look over at rem like is uh like now she Uh, doesn't know what to do Rem steps forward and is like, excuse me, everyone. Uh, I realize this is a situation here, but we will be taking the fur bulk. So uh, I guess it's not your fucking problem anymore. Ooh. And she, she takes a bag out of her belt and throws it at the feet of this old guy. And you can hear the clink of coins from inside. She's like, that should take care of it. Let's go. Oh, oh hello. Hi there, oh, where, Brand, uh, Brandy. Is it? Yes, Randy. It was. It was Brandy, short for Brandy, and now it's Randy. Randy's fine. Yes. All right, yes. Randy. It's so nice to meet you, Randy. Sayeth so puts out like a firm hand for you to shake. Oh, you have oh, a good pleasant. rapport with Fulber- Furbolgs. Oh yeah. You Ooh. love them because they nursed you back to health. Yeah, I love them. So Randy puts out his hand as well and shakes it. Not properly, but definitely in the way of you were intending. Just like uh-huh. maybe he doesn't understand the custom. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, I'm Brandy. I was Brandy, short for Brandy, and now it's Randy. Oh, but what's your name? My name is Saya. Um, as pleasant as this is, perhaps we should move uh, this along. We can do introductions in a moment. Oh, and yes, yes. Eyeing all the people holding their pitchforks now. Are, like, getting, <laughs> getting a little bit more brave as this is happening. Um, so she's oh, like, uh, Hello, small my... farm cat. How are you? Sorry, my <laughs> cat has just walked into the set. <laughs> cat on set? Cat on set. Who let this cat in here? Um, okay, so she, she kind of ushers for you all to move back to the wagon and uh, do you mind if we walk and talk, Randy? Oh, I, I can do both at the same time, yes. Fabulous. Sure. <laughs> I was like, uh... uh. <laughs> this is our guide. Wait, Ka- hmm? did Kara never... When we were stuck on that weird island after we bamfed out of the Bastard's Breach, did you not ever meet any of the Furbolgs? I did meet them. Mm-hmm. Oh. Everybody met them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was. Like, I was the like translator. Like no, <laughs> Randy's we, special. We also couldn't understand them. Well, I could. They Arnadel. speak Sylvan, yeah, or Elven. 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 Oh yeah. Elven. 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 Yeah. Um. So you you all get towards the cart and pull it away from the confused group of farmers who now sort of scratch in their heads, and you continue along the dirt road and and pull off at a moment and um. Rem turns to you, Randy, and is like, I do apologize for that situation back there, but, well, we need somebody to take us into the wilds, and they say you're the best. Ooh, well, ooh, well, one, you don't need to apologize for him. You, you, you aren't that person, and if you told him to do that, then we, we have a bit of a kerfuffle on our hands. I uh, certainly two, didn't. Uh, that's good. Uh, two, uh, the, the wilds. Are you, yes. are you sure? Did I hear that 
and he starts like cleaning out his ear and like look flick it off you said the wilds mm-hmm. uh i know mm-hmm. you are one of the few who has been in and out successfully i thought right. no one ever came back from there oh, no one ever comes back the same i was a oh. whole you are what i was a horse what what i don't understand like you were you was literally a horse is like is that why you like, like that grass in the cart mm, yes you don't quite lose your taste uh but yes i was i was i was i was i was, I was, I was a horse when I come I, back, am I gonna be like an ass? I mean, ah, that was a joke. Yeah. Rem is like, <laughs> I know. It was like choking on a bug. So she moved how we got to this part of this conversation and is just leaning in, eyes very wide. You um, hear Randy, like, Randy kind of leans back and, like, for you thought he's gonna, like, cough up a hairball. He goes, hey, hey, that's very funny. Who are you? You are a very funny one. <laughs> oh, see, so, Kara looks to Ardadil and say, really, see, someone's got good things. I'm Kara. <laughs> they, they pronounce that right. Kara. Ka- like that? Like, Kara. Kara, yeah. Um, yeah. It's good. It's nice to meet you, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Rem is just, like, struggling. <laughs> A straight face now. Ardadil's uh, back in the wagon. The wilds. Uh, where and why? Why are we going to the wilds? We have a specific location we need to reach. A, a gate. Uh, mm. We mm. can offer you much if you can take us in and out safely. Mm. We know what? you've been looking for something in particular. And How do you I know have what it. I've been looking for? Let's just say it's my business to know things. Mm. She knows a lot of things. It's true. Well, it makes a lot of sense to me. What is it that you have that I've been looking for that I haven't found yet? And Rem holds up a finger and she goes over to the wagon and then pulls out, it looks like a long kind of box. And she she holds it out to you. I do like boxes. Does it, uh, what, how much does it carry? Uh, uh, it, <laughs> the, the object is in inside of the box. It, let me let me just and she she takes off the lid and like shows you and you see that there are a pair of boots inside. <gasps> what kind of boots are they? They look so nice. They hmm the the workmanship is hmm. And he sniffs and he he looks and he inspects it very carefully and he takes out a little tiny broken glass that he probably uses as a, as a magnifying glass and it gets up really really close and he looks up and his eyes are huge and goes. Oh, these what I think they are. They are indeed. <gasps> you have yourself a deal. Wait, wait, what's so special about the boots? I don't get it. Well, one thing I miss very much from my days as a horse was how fast I can gallop and, and trot through every field I see. These boots make me go nice and fast. Hmm. Oh, okay. And this, Randy, is just the payment up front. There is even more for you if you get us out safely. We are willing to offer you a position in the Sisters of Sorrow to take care of you, to give you a place to stay. I know things have been mm. difficult for you. Uh, has, it, and has, a, has, a, has a has a has a has a room like freed up? A, a room freed up? Room? Is it like, can I stay inside? Or, or yes, you, you can absolutely live in mm. inside. Wait, I've, do you still sleep in a barn because you used to be a horse? Oh, when I can, they're very comfortable. Arnadel like lethargically hangs her head out of the, the wagon and she's like, I have a wand that, you know, like if you ever wanted to be a horse, I could help you out with that for like an hour. Oh, I could do that by myself too. Watch. And you oh. see as... Uh, Randy just all of a sudden goes and shifts and changes, and all of a sudden he is just a blue horse. Oh, (laughs) that's precious. Oh my god, I love it. And Randy very efficiently goes spectacular. (laughs) Oh, well, then I mean, never mind, but you know, well, then I am glad to have you on board, Randy. Do you have do you need to collect any things or are, are you ready to go? We've um, got problems to tackle. And he changes back. It was so sorry. <laughs> Get it. Forget you can't understand me. Oh, like uh, I do have my stuff off to the side, if you don't mind. I have a little whacking stick. It's 
since my hooves don't do as much anymore. I, I just have my bag of stuff. Well, let's go and get a move on. Great. It will take me approximately... Uh, I don't quite understand time. I'll be right back. And you see as Randy uh, walks off about, <gasps> say, I don't know, 50 feet or so, picks up a bag by the fence, comes on back, throws his backpack on and goes, hmm, let's go. All right, well, we have our specialist. Oh, boy. Rem kind of looks up at the sky and is like, okay, let's go. Did you piss off some family members? Like, are you related to fate? Because, I, you know, it seems to be real. Am I related to fate? Who's fate? Oh, not you, Rem. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, no, this is just my life. And she's, she's like, uh, um, <laughs> okay. And you begin to make your way to the edge of the wilds. Excellent. So as you draw closer, you can see there's a very stark tree line between where the wilds start and where normal civilization ends. It's just all of a sudden these tall, almost monstrous trees loom up over everything. And you can see that the canopy is far, far above your heads. And as you try to look in between the trees, it's like your vision just shifts away from understanding or seeing any deeper in these woods. It's just, it's a very strange phenomenon. And as you get closer to the tree line, your skin almost starts to tingle and you all feel a little bit more alive, a little bit more vibrant as you get close to this raw something that's just beyond this tree line. Hmm. And, yeah. um... Has anyone read or Knowledge. seen Annihilation? Knowledge check. <laughs> seen what? Annihilation. Uh-uh. No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Don't need to bring it up. Um, do you no. want me to do Arcana or History? Uh, what are you trying to get? Um, Arnadel's just like, I mean, she already knows where they're headed. She just wants to like cross-reference like her past knowledge to be like, oh yeah, we must be getting close. Sure. Okay, go ahead and make an arcana, or or you can make a history on, like, the wilds in relation to the rest of the country. 22. Okay. On arcana. Uh, you're doing arcana? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know that the wilds here, named after the Fey Wilds, which is actually a different plane of existence. Oh, okay. This is not technically the Fey Plane. What this is, is an area where the veil between the two is very, very thin. That's mm. why it's so dangerous. So things from the Feywild pour into this jungle ah. constantly. So that's why like large monsters will just suddenly appear out of the tree line or strange weather magic events or just bizarre things happen um, here and on the border here. That's why the Corellans exist primarily to stop things from the jungle crossing into the rest of the country. Oh, they're like Fey Boba Fett's. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah so they, that's why Ashtar is so close to the borderline, because their whole job is to keep the border mm. safe and stop anything that might emerge from it. Gotcha. So, you know, I mean, you're walking into a world that is very similar to the Fey plane. Uh, so that means that there will probably be a lot of fake creatures inside, lots of illusions, things shift and change, time is strange here. It, there's just, there's a lot of freaky shit <laughs> that happens. Uh, so you're going to have to be very, very careful. Okay. And uh, Rem turns to you, Randy, and so this gate that we have to get to... Uh, I'm not sure, of course, of its exact location. That's that's you, where your expertise comes in of how we can reach it. Um, but it is it is a hollowed place, large stone gate in a clearing. I don't know. Do you have any insight? I'm I'm sorry. I was was tuning out the the area, the the hair. It feels. Slightly comforting. I miss being here. What did you say? Sorry. Uh, the gate that we have to get to. Oh, yes, the gate. Sorry. 
<laughs> I just get lost in myself sometimes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so if we are going to go in, if you know that is where you want to go, that is where we must go. We may not divert, divert left or right or up or down or crossways or backwards or any other type of direction you can possibly fathom. You must go forwards and we'll get there. Ah, wait. Hmm. So we just have to like, if we believe it, then we'll get there. Saya I mean, leans over to Rem and is like, this is the guy? He comes very highly recommended. Arnold was like, this it makes is... sense to me. <laughs> this place is not as as we as we know from out here. Uh, from my days as as a horse, we, we used to go down a lot of fields and make a lot of turns on roads and in the fields and all that kind of thing. But in here, it's, it's not quite like that. You have to walk with purpose. Any, any obstacle that, 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 that's in your way, you have to just transcend and push forward and go forward and never any direction but forward. That's good to know. Yes. All right, so we'll stay together and get through this. Hmm. So, um, hmm. lead the way. Okay, forwards. As he points forward, as uh, <laughs> you guys are keep continuing on. Yeah, and and Rem asks, "Is there any sense in taking this?" Or and she points back at the wagon and the horse. Well, I mean, you you could uh, just keep in mind that if they go in there, if they decide to go in a different direction, I mean, the horse, not the cart, the cart, cart can't go by itself, but maybe it will in there. Who knows? <laughs> it's a crazy place. Uh, whichever you decide to travel is is up to you. I'm just here to uh, to guide you forwards. Okay, so she she goes over and anybody have stuff in the wagon they want to take. I'm just gonna set this horse free. It sounds like this is just nah. going to be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. Uh, hey, Randy, maybe you could tell the horse how to get to a place of safety. You, well, safety is either outside of it or through it. I mean... And Rem is like, we'll just leave this. And okay. she, she pulls a few things out of the wagon and then just breaks off the, the chain and undoes the harness from the horse and just kind of lets yeah. it... Yeah. Goodbye, Slaps it on the butt. Friends. Yeah, lets it run off into the fields to do whatever it's going to it's do. It's going to be a unicorn. <laughs> All right. are very kind to animals. This is very good. Be polite. Rule, rule number... I haven't started rule numbers yet, but it's a rule... Be polite, be kind. For those who are not kind are turned into strange things and set off in weird directions. It gets very dark in there. Oh, and you see boy. that Randy, like, he starts, like, staring off, and the, the look of jovialness that he normally has slightly goes away. He does. And just so, <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. Just, he, he just kind of stares off and goes, right, we, we should get going. Be, be, be kind, as you, as you all have been. Yes. Yeah, Fantastic. I, I yes. agree. <laughs> Good advice for anyone. I agree. Like, like, so, so, was this, what was your name? Saw so, yes? Saw so, yeah. Oh, Very so, close, though. Oh, thank you. I, I do try. Uh, it, very nice to meet you. And I, did I catch your name as he turns to uh, Arnadel? Uh, no. Um, sorry, I didn't give introductions. My name's Arnadel. Oh, Arnadel. Very, very nice to meet you. I, fi You figured out my name by now, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. nice to meet you. Oh, it's very nice to meet you as well. See, politeness, niceness, kindness, this is good. It feels good. I can feel the, the hair standing up on my head. <gasps> Let's go. And uh -huh. he's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so, everyone, the way we're going to do this, we're going to do this in a true Fay Wilds fashion. Oh I have no! A, I have a big old table, a big old random table of things, and this whole trek is just going to be us rolling on a random table of things. Yay! Random encounters. Also, so, are you making us do that? Like, are we going crazy? I don't know. Oh, oh I hate very sane. <laughs> He's look at Randy. He's fine. Yeah. Randy's He's more <laughs> sane than any of us. Uh, uh, in this realm, yeah. <laughs> All right. So who wants to roll the first D12? A D12? I do. I'm going to get it out of the way. All right. 
Sai will do it, and then Kara will do it, and then Arnadel will do it, and then Randy will do it. All right. Sweet. Let me find that little fucker. Okay. The D12, the one we never I use. It. I got I it. wanted to give it some love. Five. Five. What oh happens? man, are your guys' elemental is your element are your elemental powers gonna go nuts when Arnadel casts magic? Is it just gonna be like blah, wild surge? Oh man. Oh what? Is that a thing? I mean, I'm hoping maybe. that with my high rolling arcana check, I'm gonna remember to maybe like cool it on the magica. Man, your bell is still with what's his name, isn't it? No, it's Rama? in my bag of holding. Oh, I thought he was holding onto it for you. Oh. Oh, he is. No, he's not. No, I never handed my bell over. I tried he to. Would, oh, no. He wouldn't, he wouldn't take it. it. So oh, I right, put right, it right, in. Right. Oh, I'm like, oh, fuck no. I have that fucking bell. <laughs> God damn it. Just, we're just going to walk through and ring it the whole time. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Yeah, well. <laughs> We might banish Fuck you guys. We might banish good creatures. Honestly, too, I would though. have suggested that if she had it. <laughs> I do have it. Remember, he said to be very, very careful. Yeah, because we could banish that. good, good fake creatures. You know, like unicorns and fucking other good fake creatures that I. <laughs> there are. Ask Ren, like, hey, why don't we just wave Ring the, the bell? fucking bell? <laughs> the one would... you were told not to never treat like to a toy ring. or never yeah. to ring. <laughs> Under Just any circumstance. What could possibly go wrong? All right. So. Oh, my God. Well, shit. I don't know. Arnold just killed herself. Obviously, she's fine. Let's take some more risks. <laughs> Yo. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, my God. Sonny is going to become, become reckless. <laughs> All right. Fuck it. So, as you step over the tree line, being led by Randy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> sorry. I I'm sorry. <laughs> as as you cross that line between where the trees start and end, there is this feeling in each of your chests, like fireworks are going off inside you, and all of a sudden you take a breath and you can smell so much more than you ever could before. And as you you look at the situation around you, like your eyes burn with like just how much color and light and vibrancy this place has like the trees just seem more brown and green and purple than anything you've ever seen before and the way the sun filters through the trees it's so beautiful and then the noises of this place start to hit you it's just it's like you can hear the flap of each wing mm -hmm. and the cries of each insect and things just roaming around you it's just so we're starting to here peak. so alive yeah. yeah, we're on Molly. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we're, we're on to some peak. serious fucking shrooms. The yeah. trees are dancing with you, man. Everything's and this breathing. Is crazy. Yeah. Did everyone take their LSD before we came in. <laughs> That's a requirement. Button, too. button. Who's got the button? <laughs> and so, as you step onto this this earth beneath you, that feels just loamy and fresh, and just the smell of moss and everything around you, you see that the trees they looked really scary from the outside, but here, they don't look so bad. It's just so beautiful. And you note that the light has changed as you you've entered this place. It was it was full daytime when you stepped inside, but now it's more of like a twilight hue that is all over the place the sky is painted with pinks and purples where you can see it uh, above the tree line and you can hear creatures moving all around you and as you continue winding your way forward suddenly the trees open up and it's a very odd experience it's like everywhere you are just shifts subtly so you notice it in a flash it comes to you and you're like how how did this change? I can't really remember how it changed, but you're not standing in a tree, thick tree line anymore. There's this field stretched out in front of you that seems to go for miles and miles. And the grass all around you is of different patches of color. So you're seeing reds and purples and greens dotted all over this field. And these large mushrooms that are all in front of you just dotted everywhere. And they all have different colored rainbow caps. And some of them stand like two feet tall and have these wide, wide like brims around them. And just this huge speckled field of mushrooms stretches out in front of you. 
Kara announces very loudly before beginning to march forward. We're going to the gate. To Wait, this... <laughs> Rem, what does the gate look like? Oh my god, what if I start thinking about the wrong gate? Oh, fuck. <laughs> she just goes media downward spiral. <laughs> I think as long as one of us knows where we're going, we'll be fine. Right, Randy? Oh, yes. If we keep going together and if, if we all... Envision. You know, most of us envision like, hey, there's the gate. We should go. Which which way should we go, Sawyer? Should we go left or right? We should go forward. <laughs> yes, we should. And we should go forward. So as long as we just keep on going forward, we will reach our goal eventually. Um, Are these, do these mushrooms look just like the ones that the boggle left behind in its little they basket? They actually do look a lot like those mushrooms. Remember when we took those to battle the fey parasite? <laughs> Cuz no. we I had the bright idea that I thought that maybe being on a fey mushroom might help the world seem a little bit more normal. You guys don't remember that? I remember oh. that. It did not yeah. help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as we start moving forward, Saya wants to like go up to Randy and put like an arm through his arm if he's got just like grab his arm and um, say, How like, tall I is want to tell you about the time, like five five. Okay, five, so six. he dips down just so he can get in there for you. Oh. <laughs> and oh, uh, she just starts going on and on about the time she spent on an island with some uh, with a furball tribe and how uh, the three of them work together to help figure out uh, bring their two tribes together. You, hmm, you met others like me. Yeah, yeah, I guess they were islanders. I've, I've never experienced, I've only been told what I am, a fur bulge. I've never been told, <laughs> I, never, I never met anyone else before. What were they like? Were they like me? Were they also blue? Were they gray? Were they green? While this gray? conversation gray? is happening, I need everybody to make perception checks for me. Uh, I'm going to take mine with disadvantage Ooh. because I am enraptured. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, man. Unnatural 20. I rolled right. a shitload. What's 7 Seven plus 18? Is that 25? Oh, 25. 25. Okay. Wow. I'm quietly just, like, perceiving. 60. And my laptop is what it is first. What? Sorry, Nassim, you're cutting in and out a lot. Your internet's slow, I think. Um, maybe it'll be better if I plug it in. Okay. <laughs> plug yeah. it in, plug it in. I so rolled both... a 12 perception for me. Uh, okay. 25. Yeah, so both Kara and Arnadel, you see this, because you aren't involved in the conversation, so you're just kind of looking Wait. around. Um, and you begin to see off to the left in the middle of this field, all of a sudden, it's like the earth is starting to buckle or it's starting to bulge out as you're looking at it. It's like this mini hill is beginning to form and you see the mushrooms are just like kind of expanding uh, as this lump in the ground begins to grow and grow, straining the mushrooms on either side. Uh... And then all of a sudden you hear a, like a, sh a smushing weird like sound, like a popping and this hill that's formed now begins to move towards your group uh, at an extremely rapid rate. So it's what? just looking like this this effect of this hill that's formed is just shooting towards you right now. Tremors. But now it's very quiet, so if you weren't looking at it, you don't think you would have seen it. Did I Kara. see it? Oh, Kara immediately, like, uh, taps her hand on Randy, like, on his leg, and is like, and yes. points at this mound. What the hell is that? Oh, I need, that's the ground. <laughs> I need everybody to roll initiative. <laughs> Against a mountain? It's like a big hill of dirt. So it's still underneath the grass. Um, so it just looks like, if you imagine like AstroTurf and then like a ball underneath it, the way yeah. that looks, and it's moving rapidly towards your group. It does seem very large though. Uh, I mean, we tell you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're rolling initiative. Oh. Oh got my. Eleven. Okay. Oh, sick! I got a six. I got a uh, eighteen. I got a nine. Whoa. 
99. And then Saye, what did you get again? 18. 18. Oh, crap. And I have to roll for Rem. I keep forgetting. Guys, don't let me forget that I have an NPC here. I know that pain very oh, it's real. well. Oh, You'll of course. Rem oh, my over. God. Of course, <laughs> Rem got a 24. Of course. Poor is Mark. Good. Poor, okay. poor is Mark. <laughs> so, like, in, in just a flash, all of a sudden, Rem's long bow is down from her back and strung and pointed at this thing. She's like, Randy, we shooting? What's the call? Um, well, uh, do I know what this thing is? You can go ahead and make a nature check. Sure. See, see if you Sorry, know. I was reading my spell. Jesus. Well, at least I'm rolling as well as I normally do. Uh, Which is, that is good poor, or poorly. Very oh. poorly. I was about to say. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what is that ring? <laughs> that is an 11. Ah, uh, you have no idea. I don't know what that is, but it looks <laughs> threatening, so... Hmm, but it's nice to be polite. Maybe we should see what it has to say. And Rem oh, fires yeah, off a shot. Kind. <laughs> Damn That's it, Rem! That's way to do it. If you want to talk to Love it, it, by all means. It's better Lovely. to ask forgiveness later. Uh, for permission. <laughs> yep, and she goes ahead and fires off an arrow that lands like in the middle of the mountain and fires off another one in rapid succession. So two of her shots fly true and they just like... St- Stick in maybe like where the eye level of this mountain thing would be um and one of them like hits a mushroom square in its cap and it doesn't seem to do anything the creature just continues moving and the arrow is just left in the mushroom in behind it in his wake and she's like well shit uh and then Saye. Is it, it's rapidly approaching us or is it oh, yeah. maintaining? Oh, okay. It is charging towards you. I don't know. How do, how do you fight a, a lump of dirt? <laughs> I Take guess more I'll... acid. <laughs> um, can I make a check to see if I know of any creatures or beasts that, I don't know, dwell underground and are that large? Sure, go ahead and, uh, yeah, make a nature check. Ooh, okay. Can you tell if it's a, a plant 21. creature? Uh, 21. Um, burrowing creatures that large, you comes to mind, uh, like bullets would be yeah. something that would come to mind, or um, that's really the only thing very large that can move very fast that you're thinking of. But it's also like under the grass. It's it's pretty weird. So you're, a bullet is your best uh. guess. And imagine uh, uh, if you're thinking about what a bullet looks like. Do you know, like, Rhyhorn from Pokemon? Yeah. They're basically that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Those aren't fun. It's bad. That's it bad. big. Yeah. Well, it big, bad, and hungry. If we're... Okay, it's coming up on us. I'm going to just take a fireball and throw it at the approaching mound. Okay, sure. Guys, from your I... necklace? Yeah. So I think Guys. I have four now. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe we shouldn't be trying to fight it. (laughs) (laughs) Too late. Fireball. (laughs) I hear you, Kara. Do you say it? I could hear you too. Why? Well, Randy said we're supposed to be kind, and being kind means not throwing fireballs. (laughs) Generally, I mean, I don't know what you're into. It's like a fucked up form of dodgeball. <laughs> Once you're just playing well, around, it could be a very sick burn. I'm not going to say Oh, oh no, damn. God, okay. you guys. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What were you doing? I'm going to throw a fireball. Okay. This time I disagree with Kara, and I think, nope, I'm not going to risk it. By all means. So go ahead. Uh, you have to roll to hit, I believe, with that. No. They make dexterity saving throw. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So you just chuck this, like, bead from your necklace at this <laughs> hill that is rapidly moving towards you. It is a 20-foot oh. radius. Wow, wow, wow. It got a, a two. Um, sweet. So you just throw this fireball and explodes. And as this happened, you just see mushrooms 
flying everywhere as the impact of this spot hits it and all of this rainbow colored grass like kind of lights on fire in the area and there's this big circle left there of like charred blackened earth and you hear this roaring sound as this creature just emerges from this this now scorched like chasm of dirt surrounding it and you see this thing it looks like well nothing you've ever seen absolutely but it's got grayish skin that it has a vaguely humanoid shape except if all the muscles in the human body were bulged out to maximum capacity and it almost looks like it has like shifting watery mounds of its body and its head is vaguely humanoid looking like you can see two eyes but its skull has like flattened out to this long sort of point And you can see that patches of its skin have (laughs) these, like, dotted kind of mushroom-like appearances. So now it, like, stands up out of the field completely pissed that you've, like, lit everything on fire around it. And it roars back its head, or it leans back its head and roars at you uh, as it stands there before you. Setting shit on fire is what I do. Hell yeah, and you definitely did it. Uh, and now it's its turn. Uh, you have destroyed its disguise. So this thing bounds over. It was like kind of reaching up towards the skies with its hands in pain, but now it crouches down and you see its long human-like arms hit the ground as it's running at you in this like spindly kind of way on all four limbs. And it is Ooh. going to go ahead and try to bite you. Celeste, just curious, is this a medium or a large creature? This is a large creature. Okay. So this is, oh, one question, does this thing considered a humanoid? Yes. For any damage? Uh, is, sorry. Did no damage to him? Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. It's what, 5d6 or 6? 8? Six. I think it's 8. eight it's 8d6. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, oh, damn. Damn. Fireball ain't nothing to fucks with. No, it's not. True story. 10, 15, 21, 24, hold on. 28, 32, 38 damage. Wow. Okay. Ah, damn. Damn. And it is. Is it dead? That'd be funny. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's taking double damage. Oh, because oh, it's a plant. plant. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a plant human. So forty-two. Thing. So no, that's or sixty-two. Thirty-eight. Seventy-six. Oh, I suck at math. Sorry, guys. Seventy-six damage. Oh, Ooh, a boy. damn. Yeah, it is mad. And you see, though, all that the, like, just the made sort it of... mad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so all of its little mushroom caps on its body now are, like, charred, and you can see it's leaking water at this point. Um, it's like you've just punctured pieces of it, and, yeah, this kind of milky fluid is, like, dripping out of it as it's running towards you. Uh, so, yep, it goes in and it tries to bite you, Saya, with an 18. Will that hit your AC? Um, uh, Ty hits me, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I am going to. Okay. That is going to be 16 points of piercing damage as its nasty, nasty teeth hit you. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw against poison for me. Get nasty. <laughs> it, it is. Gross. Constitution with my. Con- I mean, it's nothing. It's 12. You got a 12? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, you are going to take an additional four points of poison damage, and your vision starts to go real woozy. And so now you're looking at this thing, and it's like you're seeing double images of everything. So as long as you are poisoned, you are going to take disadvantage on all attack and saving throws. Okay. All right. Am I not? immune to poison no i don't don't know next level you human uh all right and then kara so now this thing is all up in your face oh still being diplomatic 
do the right thing. <laughs> but her friend just got so hurt. <laughs> I don't know. As a free action, can I say something, Celeste? Hell yeah, always. Well, there's a rule that if someone is not polite to you, then you don't have to be polite to it. Oh, that's a I, pretty stand. That's a solid rule. That's mm. good to yeah. know. And then she immediately uses her bonus action to rage <laughs> to meet this animal's creature's humanoid's fury and rushes at it and goes to slash at it with her battle axe. Hell yeah. Ba -bom. Oh boy, that will be 25 to hit. Uh huh. And then for my second hit, woo, that's a 27. Wow. All right, so. 27 damage? Oh, no, no, 27 to hit for the oh, second yes, ball. yeah. And then, uh, let's see here, 12, 17, 27 damage total. All right. So as you chop through this thing, it's like, you know, when you're slicing mushrooms with mm -hmm. your knife, they just give so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it just is like cutting through. That's what his skin is like. Ooh. So this creature is a lot <laughs> lighter than it looks. It's yeah, it's uh -huh. totally. So your axe is just making mega work of this thing. And how do you want to kill it? You chopped it up. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So she uh, goes forward running full force brings her axe up over her head and slashes like right through like the middle of its torso and she's used to exerting so much force that it just slices through like butter and she it, it like falls into two pieces and she kind of stands there like shocked <laughs> and then looks back at everyone else <laughs> and as that happens in its form you literally split it right down the middle and then you begin to hear like a small kind of squealing sound and you see this little red cap mushroom that has to stand maybe like six inches or so it climbs out of the body of this thing you see these two little legs and arms and it looks at you and lets out like a and then it begins Aww. to run away off oh, into no. the field wait what are you kill it with fire <laughs> <laughs> There's a tiny mushroom with tiny arms and legs. This what? I just I don't understand. And it disappears into the camouflage of the surrounding area. Who wants to roll the next d12? I wait. Oh, it was, oh, it was, is, are we out of initiative? Hmm? Yeah. We are out. You you killed it. Oh. Um. I I'm rolling the next one. Then Brittany. Then Josh. All right. You all are very strong people. I'm very impressed with you. <laughs> You're like Eleven. holding your spell like, oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I was ready. All right, 11. <clears throat> I'm very hungry for sauteed mushrooms now, you guys. Mm -mm. Sounds really good. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. yum, 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 yum. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, and as you pick your way over the remains of this creature, you can see as you get further and further away, it's like the ground just starts to kind of encroach. The grass just moves to cover this body as, oh. as you're walking away. And so it's almost like this thing, you see the lump of its outline form oh. in the grass that eventually gets covered and is beginning to press into the earth as you leave this clearing. And you come to a very, very large uh, wooded area once again. Right before and, we head out, I duck down to the grass and I go, oh, very good job, grass. I'm very proud of you. Do have a good meal. And I stand up and I continue to walk. Oh, the God. Grass, That's the grass really blows. disturbing. A, a wind suddenly comes through and you get a very I, sweet. I wave in the same manner. Yeah, you get a very sweet smell across mm -hmm. your nose in response. Thank you. It does it again. <laughs> and uh so as you pass out of this clearing and back into a wooded area the trees here are a lot different than those you experienced before before it was very uh tall trees with wide leaves very jungle-esque but as you're stepping into this area it seems more like a like a cold weather forest so more of a coniferous forest uh as you're getting into so you see these large pine trees and the scent of pine again it's just overwhelming like as you're transitioning through these spaces 
uh, and the trees are a little bit further apart here. And uh, you come upon another clearing all of a sudden, and you see that there are three trees sitting around a table. But you look again, and they're not trees. <laughs> they seem to have arms and legs and faces, but they stand really, really tall above. And they're all sitting at this table, and they seem to be holding these large sheets of paper that they're putting down. That's really fucked up. They're holding, like, the remnants of their family pulverized. members. <laughs> pulverized family. Gone through the whole rigmarole in the process of a paper mill. <laughs> That's I'm pretty, yeah. Cycle. That's basically like so picking up human vellum. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you see this scene in front of you. Um, Wait. Uh, let's not disturb them. They seem to be occupied. Let's keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I look Wait. over at Randy and I'm just like, uh... What are these? They look like people. Uh, do I know what these things are? Yeah, you know these are treants. One of the more common denizens of of the Feywild. Do I know um, them as good? They aren't good or evil. Their purposes are their own, but they aren't quick to anger. They're not quick to do anything, quite honestly. Uh, they We're are just... very powerful when they want to be, but just don't piss them off. What? They're relatively harmless. Let's just uh, carry on. <laughs> well, uh, we do not want to seem like we're trespassing, so if you don't mind, I'll quickly say hi, that we are going to be walking through the wood, if they do not mind, and to enjoy their game. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay. I will be... We'll wait here. Standing behind. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to cast uh, Speak with Plants uh, on myself. I'm going to walk up and in the uh, plant language that they would understand, I speak out and go, uh, hello, please don't get up. Uh, my name is Randy. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. I would just like to let you know that there are going to be a couple of us walking through if that is okay. I just want to let you know so you're not surprised or jumpy. So uh, please enjoy your game or whatever you are doing as we proceed onward. Is that okay with you? And during this whole speech, all three of them have been taking the time to very slowly turn their heads in your direction. So by the time you finish your speech, they're finally looking at you for the first time. I, I very <laughs> patiently, eyes wide, I do not move, and mm -hmm. I just respect the time. Yeah. And as the one that's closest turns to you, it, it seems to be maybe a it's like I got a cherry wood thing going on. So it's, uh, it's brown with this deep red kind oh. of color. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, it turns to you and says, thank you, small friend. Have a excellent day. Thank you. And I very slowly walk over to the group and I go, we can go now. The other tree uh, sitting next to that one says, would you like to play a round or do mm -hmm. you need to be going? Well, uh, I appreciate your offer. Uh, however, we do need to get going. We, need, we are on a bit of a schedule. You know how time works around here. But if you absolutely insist sure but if it's okay you guys can continue i do not want to intrude we will be on our way is that okay carry on you... stay safe <laughs> you two friends oh, and then wow. i i bow and i walk away and they are nodding their head very slowly to you as they pass <sighs> along were the, folk, folk. were the treants speaking in tree language? 
Uh, yes, they would have. No, they would have been speaking in Sylvan. Or, well, yeah, not common. Not common. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so we're, we're just listening to this really so, slow exchange. To you, <laughs> to you, it didn't sound, it sounded like creaking wood. Like the way, like, an old door sounds when it closes oh. that's just off the hinges. Like, the, yeah. <laughs> oh. I bet that was really surprising to hear coming out of Randy. Yeah. Oh Oh my god. (laughs) Alright, would somebody like to roll me a d12? Is it my turn now? Yeah. Ten. Okay. Celeste, thank you for that experience. (laughs) Very rewarding. And uh, so you continue walking along, leaving the treants behind to engage in their card game. Uh, and this this open woods continues on as you go. There's no dramatic shift in scenery until you come to this moment where you see the trees are even more and more spaced out. So you're looking now, you're walking on a floor that's that's a bed of pine needles. And again, that fresh scent is is clear. Uh, in your nose, but you see now that the trees are dotted very few and far between until you get to what looks like an aisle of these trees, and they just seem to stretch on for a great distance. But these trees all have doors in them of different sizes, shapes, Hmm. styles, different paint colors. It's just like these doors have been just inserted. So like in the Nightmare Before Christmas when he gets yeah, a lot, a lot like that. And this just appears in this long, long aisle of these doors. Ooh, I would like to look for a door that has like a picture of a gate on it. Okay. I look for one with a raven. Yeah, so you're looking at all of these doors around. They don't seem to have images on them. Oh. It's the only thing that are really different between them is like the make and model of the doors uh, but the first the first door you get close to you immediately begin to hear sounds coming from behind it and you hear sounds of voices and laughter and music coming from behind one of these doors is that on the straightaway of going forward or is that branching off so no these, pun intended. Th- <laughs> uh, so these doors are lining this aisle. So you you have to continue forward, walking by each of these rows of doors. And this is just the door on the first left that you hear this sound coming from. Right, right. Remember, everyone, single file. Uh, we have to go forward. This is not forward. That's a door to somewhere else. We don't want to go over there. We want to go forward. Oh, okay. Where do these doors go? It doesn't matter. It doesn't go where you want to go. And once you go where you don't want to go, where you don't know where you're going to go, you're going to go somewhere you're never going to be able to come back from. Well, we're just going to keep following you. Saya goes behind Arnadel. Okay. You don't want to be lost here. That's bad. Because once you are lost here, you will never be found. Let's go. All right. On that note. And forward. forward. All right. So you continue to walk through the row of doors. Roll me a d12. Uh, who? Josh. That's you, Josh. Oh, hey. You're up. That's a nine. Okay. All right. Uh, as you are walking down this row of trees uh, with the doors on either side, you all begin to hear a great rustling sound and you see this large brown shape just suddenly appears right behind one of these trees and a face sticks its way out from behind it and you see it's that a form of a huge huge bear like at least five times the size of any normal bear you you've ever seen easily it could carry uh, maybe 10 people on its back uh, but this bear is wearing this set of small gold-rimmed glasses. What? Oh, how precious. Oh, and hello. As, as the bear pops out behind, oh, yes. Hello, uh, travelers. Hello. Is mm. this bear speaking in common? Yes. What? Saya goes, hey, bear. <laughs> um, that is not my name. My name is Bear Tholomew. Oh, God. Ooh. 
Beth, what all of you, a pleasure, pleasure to, to meet you. Mm, a pleasure to meet you as well. Lovely weather we're having, yes? Yes, very. Uh, my mm. name is Randy. I was Brandy. We short for Brandy. And now it's Randy. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I put out my hand. Ah, oh, pleasure to meet you. And it lifts one of its very, very large paws to offer you, like, a, a talon. Oh, God. To kind of shake. <laughs> shake. Uh, <clears throat> Would any of you mind too terribly helping me out and opening that door over there? I cannot reach it with my non-opposable thumbs. Insight, mm. insight check. Okay, go ahead. Can he fit through the door? No. It does not look like it. Thirteen? Okay. Uh, you know, you're not real used to reading the facial expressions of a bear. And you really have no idea. He's asking you very politely. Um, see, uh, un unfortunately, if you don't, if you don't mind, um, we need to go in that direction. And you know how things are here. If we divert from the path at all, we would be lost forever. We, we need to continue that way. I'm trying to think of a way I can help you open the door from here. Is, is that okay? Uh, absolutely. I just need the door open to hmm. pass through. Oh, or you see, you I cannot turn it with my paws. The handle. Oh. Anybody have mage hand? No, what? Well, can Alistar do it? He's really good at opening doors. That is true. <laughs> Established. Okay. Well, I I kind of look at him and I I'm like, all right. He's like a little fake creature, right? He can't get lost here. He's not a fae. Not a fae. He's actually a dragon. Oh. Everyone always talks about how he looks like a fae. He does look he's, like a. Fae. He does, but he's not. Uh -oh. so, little butterfly wings. He's not a he is not a fairy dragon, he is a pseudo dragon. So he goes to, to fly over towards the door and opens it with his little hands, and the bear nods at all of you. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. And he walks towards the open doorway and sticks his head inside, and then you see his shoulders begin to like move and like kind of dislocate as this bear is like sticking its way into this doorway that is too Weird. too far too small for it and you hear now the sounds of there's definitely a party happening oh. on the other side of this door mm, that's um, rad um, yeah so you see here matt yeah just like music you hear like bartholomew and yeah. where the hell have you been yeah everybody's like ah as bartholomew like fits in the final door and it swings shut behind him a pleasure to meet you <laughs> that was nice mm. he was and nice Saya, roll me a d12. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Again. See what I mean? Polite people. Two. <laughs> a two. Oh, boy, yes. Okay. Um, all right. So as you uh -oh. continue on towards the outside row of these trees, and you've had your encounter with this bear, uh, the trees begin to diminish more, and you find yourself walking downwards on a slope that becomes this hill and suddenly you see right around the ridge that this huge lake opens up in front of you just this incredibly mm. vast lake that goes as far as the eye can see if you didn't know any better you'd think you'd walked upon like an ocean shore mm. and you see that the ground now has changed into this pebble like substance beneath your feet and then becomes sand as it gets closer to the water and you see that there's it's just blue all around in front of you but there is a small um, what's the word? Not a boardwalk. Dock. A dock. Catwalk? That's oh. what it is. There's a small dock. dock in front of you, and then tethered to that with this ratty ass looking rope, uh, is a boat, a rowboat. Shall we continue forward then? Uh, I, I think well, so. so. Can we all fit in the boat? It does look like you can all uncomfortably fit in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yep. Someone might have to sit in Randy's lap. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> There's no room I can walk on water, you know. Oh, Just, that's true. There is a really lot easy. of water. If I if I may if, 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 if I may recommend, you should stay in the boat. You don't want to disturb what you don't have to. For the oh. water can turn into many things. Okay. It could suck you in. It could spit you out. It can rip you apart and tear you into pieces. Trust me, I've, se I've seen it done. Mm -hmm. 
I trust your guidance. Absolutely. You're very kind. I'll take my seat in the little canoe. Mm. Ram, Ram at this point is just like, is anybody else getting tired of this shit? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. um, who, what, what's your language in here, please? Oh, that's a fake care. She, she looks at you and she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's just me. I'm a little oversensitive. Saya definitely is, but she doesn't want to, you know, bring a negative uh, aura into the group and just <laughs> vibe. <laughs> just like, oh, but you know, there's nothing we can do about it. Might as well keep moving forward. The faster okay. the better. So what I'm going to do is, because this is a very small boat, I'm going to use uh, Furbolg magic to cast Disguise Self on myself, ah. which I can make myself seem three feet shorter than normal. Nice. So you give everybody uh, a little bit of room. Yeah. I'm not sure if that affects everything on a physical level or is it just doesn't. an illusion. <laughs> um, but I at least give everyone the idea that it's smaller. That they have more space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Yes. Yep. Yep. So you all pile into this boat, and there are two oars. Who is rowing? I'll row. Okay. All right. Jinx, you owe me a cupcake. <laughs> I want a cupcake. Why'd you say that? Um. Also, is everybody good to go for like another fifteen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Um. Well, there's just so many fun things, and so as as you all are rowing out into the middle of this lake. I need you all to make perception checks for me. You begin to pull further and further away from the dock, and there does not to see, seem to be any land on the far side that you can see. 18. That's a natural 20. Oh, Ten. yes. Okay, natural 20 and the 18. Uh, as you are watching the water around you, you begin to see ripples moving across the otherwise smooth glassy lake and all of a sudden this mist begins to roll in so as you were looking out you couldn't see any shore or anything it just seemed like water for miles and miles but suddenly this fog presses in so really you can't even see beyond the confines of the boat if you were to reach out your hand offwards it, it would disappear oh god we're in barovia <laughs> <laughs> taking initiative crossover <laughs> we've done it and so just before this mist begins to obscure, you catch these ripples in the water and you see two large glowing green eyes beneath the surface of the water. Ruh, row. And then the boat begins to rock as these waves come in further and further motion and this huge splash of water happens in front of the boat as you see this form begin to emerge and just seems to stand on on the water itself and it appears to be a woman but made out of water and like wrapped in seaweed and just so alien and strange looking and she begins to speak in a voice that is not of any language but it is of all languages and you feel it as much as you as you hear it uh and she says who among you is the bravest? Who among you is the champion? Saya is just like stunned right now of this w woman or thing, whatever it is, and not really hearing what she just said. She just kind of is like, you're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and Saya feels this. It's like when your water spirit like wakes up it's, it's that feeling like moves around mm. in your chest. Like it's at attention. Yeah. And she waits and mm. you can see these glowing green eyes that are just like seem to penetrate into all of your souls as she stares and waits for an answer. I go, uh, uh, ex excuse me for one moment as we discuss your question. I turn around and go, I'm just your guide. I'm no champion, please. Uh... Me? Uh, I'll be happy to talk to her. Ooh. Well, I'd love to talk about that later. Sure. She goes, answer uh, I, me! I turn to her and I go, uh, I'll be your champion. Our champion. The champion. <laughs> okay, and she, she moves forward on the surface of the water and suddenly she's like in your face and you can like 
as you breathe, you're breathing in water from her being. So you're getting like, <laughs> kind of like choking, like, like a humidifier is just like shoved up your nose mm -hmm. when you're like standing next to her. And she looks at you with these green eyes. No. And then she looks at Kara. You. Yeah, I had a feeling. Are you a champion? I mean, yeah. Will you battle to your best? Ah, always. Will you bring me glory? All the glory. Hmm. And she, she looks down at the water and points at a spot, and you see this sword begins to emerge from the lake. Just and don't she throw it at me, okay? <laughs> Watery taunt. <laughs> uh, she, picks, <laughs> she picks up the sword, and she's grabbing it by the blade side and <laughs> offers you the hilt. And you I see- Take it. Yeah, this is a long sword that sh seems to shimmer with a blue green, almost looks like scales as this thing. And it just water just continues to drip off of the blade as you that. hold it. And she says, go forth, bear this sword in my name. What's your name? You never said it. I am the lady of the lake. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about this sword, Kara, <laughs> that you now have. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so this sword does 1d8 slashing damage plus 1d4, d6 cold damage. It is a plus two long sword. As long as you wield this in the lady's name, those stats remain the same. You get the cool. feeling, though, if anything were to change or due respect isn't given while you have this blade, things might get complicated. You said, I'm sorry, you said 1d8 plus 1d6 1 1 1 of cold, cold damage. damage. Okay. And it's a plus two longsword. Yeah. So you just always have to proclaim that you're using it for her. Yep. You just, a, she, all you have is a new battle cry. That's all that means. <laughs> yeah. she, she nods to you and then just evaporates into a bunch of water and the mist parts all of a sudden as you're left holding this blade that feels cold to the touch like the coldness of a deep deep ocean and as this happens the mist just seems to dissolve and you see a shore on the other side thank you she yells <laughs> as we approach the shore yep <laughs> and that is that all right, let's go ahead. I think we got time for one more. I oh. already rolled twice. Oh, that's me. Two. Oh, okay. Uh, we, all right. So we just did two, so I get to pick. Ooh. That sounds better. <laughs> all right, so as you see the shore appears uh, on the other side of you, you, you get closer and closer to this dock on the other side, and then you see that there is a clearing with a cabin that is sitting there, and you see smoke is winding out of the chimney. But as you get closer to it, you see that there are statues surrounding the entire yard of this place, just crammed in, like, wooden carved statues. Of... And you hear the of people. Mm. People, creatures all sorts of different things mm. um incredibly lifelike sculptures everywhere mm -hmm. and you hear the sound of sawing coming from the backyard of this house mm -hmm. sounds a bit foreboding i'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. so i know i'm your guide and everything and i'm supposed to be very polite so i will leave this up to you should we say hi or should we pass without a trace if you get my drift I have Arnold's like I'm ready to get to this gate to be honest so keep on horsing gotcha let's hope it we're not worried about trespassing this time mm. I think we need to be sneaky do I know anything of this person or being go ahead and make a make a knowledge roll for me 
Hmm. Not bad, not bad. That is a 17. Okay, so you haven't specifically encountered this area of the wilds before, but you know, if, if there's anybody who lives here, it's probably... <laughs> Uh, it can be considered extremely rude if you're to pass onto somebody's property as you have just done, and if you're caught sneaking off of it without trying to give any kind of diplomatic answer, mm -hmm. you know that's that always spells trouble. Um, so you're not familiar with this specific creature, but you have already intruded on its land, so you've got to give it some kind of due, or be real, real good on those sneak checks. I believe... <laughs> I'd like to change my answer from what he said before because thinking back to it, if we are caught, it could be very bad. So maybe we should say a quick hi. Okay. Mm. Try not to be too intimidating. We don't know who this is and people can be scared very easily. Kara okay. finds a way to like she the sword <laughs> yeah and then you yeah you're like i don't because you just you have your act and you're like i you were not given a scabbard Actually, are there any are there any plants around uh yeah there there are a bunch of little plants kind of shrubbery the trees start on the far side of this cabin again uh, lady of the lake and then a shrubbery celeste are we really going down yep. this road of oh, hello uh, yes Earth? it's me i'm just stealing everything from <laughs> 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 Uh, so what I would like to do is use my um, staff of the woodlands. I'm going to use two charges, sorry, uh, three charges to speak with plants. I'm going to go down. What was the plant that I'll be talking to today? Uh, so there are trees in the area, or you can, uh, it looks like there's some scraggly crops that are growing in front of the house. Um what plant would you like to speak to? I would like to talk to the tree because the tree, more than likely, has been here the longest. Mm -hmm. So trees I would like are to... more sensible to talk to. Hmm. So I went to. I'm going to go to the nearest tree, uh, mm -hmm. and I go, um, uh, "Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Randy. It was Brandy? And Brandy's long dead. Randy now. Um, I know you, Brandy. Morning. Oh, we've met before. Oh. We have. No, oh, lovely. I I'm Julia. Julia. Oh, it's been such a long time. Oh, How yes, I know. Oh, good. Well, I'm always sort of the same, you know. How, how is Margaret? Oh, Margaret. Margaret is lovely. You know, she just had her sapling, and Ooh. she is just glowing. Congratulations! <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. And, you know, and I've put down roots here, and I'm like, sort of hoping for <laughs> something to, to happen, but, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll move. I don't know. I kind of like it here, though. It's a nice view. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening. Well, uh, that is a curious question, because I see all these wooden statues out mm, here, mm -hmm. and is, looking at this all day, maybe your thing of, of, you know, some people are just sadistic, uh, and some trees may have that same tendency of just Oh, like no, the, the woodcarver, he's, he's great. He just, he, he sings the wood right out of us. Totally mm -hmm. harmless. Oh, so, okay, so we're not in danger or anything. We can say hi. Oh, I, I don't see why not. He's a little bit crazy, but other than that... What's, what's the worst thing you've seen him do? Uh, uh, I don't know. That piece over there is pretty terrible. Uh, and she has no way of pointing, so... <laughs> um, if you could give me a... Let me turn, and I slowly turn, and I go, just, just tell me when to stop. Oh, oh there, there. Oh. And it looks like a statue of, like, a dwarf has been carved, but the face is all kind of weird. And just... It, it's just not a very aesthetically pleasing statue. Hmm. So, you know, that that was pretty terrible. Did they arrive here like that? Uh, no, no. It's not a very good likeness of the dwarf at all. Oh. Okay, so we should just be on our guard just in case he's a little cranky. Oh, yeah. Hmm, understood. Mm. Well, Julie, it's been a pleasure talking oh, to an you. An absolute pleasure as always. Welcome back. Oh, thank I you very much. I hope you don't much. die. I hope so, too. And I hope you bear great fruit in the future and you Aww. are able to share it with everyone. Oh, you. well, thank you. And, <laughs> so uh, sweet. And uh, please, please uh, say hi to Margaret for me as well. I it's will, absolutely. Uh, she will be delighted to hear oh, you're fantastic. doing well. 
Okay, I will. I will see you later then. And I give a little tap on the on the uh, bark. <laughs> Ooh, <sorry>. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I forget where I am sometimes. <laughs> no, Goodbye. it's quite all right. Ooh, I'll oh, enjoy oh. the view. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Oh my god. And then I, I walk away and I make sure to I make sure to walk away in a way that, you know, she's going to be looking at me when I'm Oh late. yeah. Oh yeah. It's so, sauntering. I'm sauntering. Oh, yeah. Put a little pep in my step. Uh give a little gallop if you will. And oh, yeah. I head back to the group. And I go, "Oh, things are fine. Just uh he may be a little crazy." Oh, so like everything else here. <laughs> Not fair enough. Uh, but we All should right. say hi. We should be polite. Uh, that was Julia. She's a friend of mine. Um, Julia was uh, smiling at you a lot. Oh, you could see her rustle of leaves when I was leaving, eh? <laughs> good. Good, good. You could tell she was really pining for you. Oh, no. Oh, I see. what You, you are fantastic with these puns. Unacceptable. Oh, it's very acceptable to me. I say to no voice in the sky. <laughs> Uh, so it, let's go over and knock. Yeah, we start heading over to the little cabin. Mm -hmm. Rap a tap tap upon his chamber door. Yeah, so you hear the sound of like sawing, and as you knock upon the door, uh, it stops. And you hear a voice, a male voice from the other side. Hello? Uh, hello. We are passing through. I wanted to say hi. I know one of your trees outside. She she gave a great reference. Hmm. And you hear like a an unlocking sound, and the door swings open, and this man is looking at you. Uh, it looks like he's maybe in his fifties, though it's sort of hard to tell. He's covered in like dirt, and it's like these wood shavings are kind of stuck to the dirt, and he's wearing this outfit that probably was like very regal at one point in time but since it's just absolutely filthy and soiled and almost like falling off of his body as he looks at you with this gaunt expression and you can read just true madness in these eyes as he says yes you'll do perfectly come in what come uh, in oh sure sure come he in he opens come up in. the door and ushers uh, no. you to come inside uh, no so i have holds on to randy and doesn't let him enter the building first we just say oh no no sorry we really actually don't have much time to to spend with you we just wanted to let you know that we'll be passing through and we uh won't be disturbing any of your property or no no or... no no you are here by providence and he points up and he points at himself providence and then he points over behind him and you can see in this large room there is one of these wooden statues there um it's like a human shape loosely but it doesn't have a face carved into it the face is just a block of wood he's like i need a new face you are here which of you would care to be immortalized forever hmm yeah Brittany. Well, i would like to use the wicked mind and reach out to everyone except for the crazy man and be like, um, hmm. I can cast hold person if you guys want, and we can get the fuck out of here. Car immediately looks at you and says, it shakes her head. Just do, a do you mean to put my face or someone's face on it, or do you wish to to whittle it on your current statue? Just oh, curious. On, on my statue, you you will be the model for my new piece. So you're I'm not going to do anything with my face. Trying to no. pull him out of the door. Except create your your face will be here forever for all of time, like all of the faces that I keep and pass through for. I'm a keeper of memory. I am the carver. You are curious with your verbiage. Oh, hmm. green. Verbiage? I, I don't Forgive know how to me, say your I, name. It, it has been Words. a while since I've had a visitor. This piece, mm -hmm. it must be finished. I, I insist. Some Someone must sit for this piece. Well, he didn't do too good with the dwarf, so probably not me. I'm... And he's starting to, like, scratch his face and, like, gets, you know, he's looking over at the statue and looking at all of you and becoming more desperate. You can tell. Can I use detect magic? Sure. 
as you look around the cabin, everything has a kind of a rainbow magic quality. Um, but he himself does not appear to be magic. Um, his statues around him do all have a blue sort of glow around them. Hmm. What school of magic on that does she so, get? So blue is an enchantment. Ah. Well, the piece is finished except for the face, and, and you have appeared here, so you must be the ones I am modeling it after. So who is going to sit for this? Sir, what if I whittled your face into it? You do not have the skills. How do you know? Because you are not... <laughs> You are not a great artist. I have spent hundreds of years, or or ten, or five, however long I've been here since I was not here. I mean, this statue is, is for art. my collection. Mine. Can I make an insight check? Hmm. Absolutely. It's worth a shot. If somebody if somebody walked into your tattoo shop and was like, "Why don't I tattoo you?" Oh, for sure. No, I would. I would be like, "Get the fuck out of my shop!" Exactly. <laughs> he literally 14. just wants a model for a, a mask. That is what he is asking for with his words. Uh, Seventeen. <laughs> Fourteen. A fourteen. Um, he is definitely crazy, but he seems very singular in his purpose, and there's nothing like. I don't. You can't really tell. If it's nefarious or not, he's clearly getting really agitated that nobody's answering him. Uh, so what I am going to do is okay. The before this game, we came up with the name of somebody in particular. Would that figure be well known throughout this area? Uh. Yeah, as one of the, the Archfey. Yeah. They're all okay. pretty well known. So I'm going to go, Sir, my humblest apologies, but we need to continue, for Baka has declared it that I must guide people through this area, and that is my job. We just wanted to say hi, and we did not want to trespass, but we cannot stay much longer because Baka has willed it so. Mm, what do I care for the horses of this place? I don't care. Sit. It will take only but a moment. I insist. Bram. You are treating me very poorly in my own home. Bram, why don't you sit for the nice man? Bram's like, I... Uh... Mm. And she, she looks... Uh... uh I, fine. She's like, I will sit for you if if that will solve this. If that will let, will you let us leave after that? He's like, of course. Fine. All right, I'll do it. Can I hold my dagger? He's like, whatever you want. <laughs> She's like, okay. Uh, so she goes and moves over and there's this stool that he indicates which is right by the carved statue and she sits in the chair and she is mm -hmm. obviously completely on edge like with her dagger just <laughs> ready there and she's staring at him and he he like gets really close to her face and like almost uh -huh. touches it and she's like <laughs> like jerks jerks her face away he's like this is not what you look like Oh, yeah. I will carve what you truly look like. And she's like, I don't think that's a... Okay, I think what? somebody else should probably sit in this chair. No, no, you gotta do it now. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, and she's like looking at all of you like, are you sure? I, this... Mm, and he's like, I will carve you. And she's like, I don't like your phrasing. Uh, and she, she, she's sitting there in the chair. And he goes over to the wooden statue. And he picks up this fine set of tools. And he begins to carve. And it's rapid. As you can see, chunks of this wood are, are flying away as he's smoothing edges and angles. And he, it takes him about five minutes. 
to do this. And as he steps away, you see that the statue has entirely transformed. It looks like this figure that's swathed in this black, thick robe with a hood over the top of it. And then there's this this face that's barely human at best. Imagine if you sucked all the water like out of a face, and so it's more of like a skull that exists in this very thin layer of skin and these dark, dark, hollow eyes. Whoa. And he's like, it's terrifying. And she's like, okay, can we go Wait, now? Is that what you really look like? I think I'm done here. Can we go? He's like, yes, by all means. And she she stands up and like puts her dagger away and she kind of like storms past all of you like not bothered Maybe at all she... by this. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Like, maybe she's embarrassed almost, like, is the lead. She's like, let's go. I think she just doesn't want us to ask any questions. But I have so many. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're on our way now. Uh, I'm glad you got your, your thing. Uh, very nice. Uh, we are going to leave. So thank you for having us. We are being on our way. Hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and he he's just staring at the statue. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I grab the door and I go. <laughs> <laughs> and you close it behind you. And you continue on as you walk through the woods behind this house. And as you walk, the scenery begins to change. That twilight light that you had before, it's now gone really, really dark. As it's just the moments right before the moon is, is about to rise. The sky turns this almost blood red color. And then as you continue on, the trees grow dark and twisted and shadowy, almost like they've just recently been burnt. And it's the skeleton of trees left before you. And you see these clouds begin to roll in over the blood red sky. And there's the patter of rain that begins to start uh, as it's this, this drizzle that you're pushing through and you hear the clack of thunder in the distance and then lightning strikes illuminating the area as things just grow darker. And you see that there's this large hill that expands in front of you. And even at this distance through the rain and the flashes of lightning, you see this large stone gate. This thing, it, it looks like, so it's two pillars with this bar across the top. So imagine like a Stonehenge-esque gate. And as you walk into the clearing, you see that runes flare across the surface in this electric blue sort of light. And then everything goes dark for a moment. And then there's a flash of lightning again, and you see that there's a figure standing atop this hill. It seems to be a horse with a rider upon it. But this rider is just swathed in darkness. And as the lightning flashes again, you can see that this rider doesn't have a head it's holding it in one of its hands pointed towards you as you see this eye, the eyes in this severed head begin to flare up with a white light. And in the other hand, he draws something that looks like a whip, but then you realize it's actually a human spine oh. that he cracks upon the ground in time with the thunder of the place. This is so metal. <laughs> That's exactly totally what I was thinking. Brutal. Oh my gosh. The breakdown and hits. Like when... <laughs> You have found the gate and you must face its guardian. Oh but shit. But that will be next time where we are done oh. for this episode. Damn. Da -da -da. Yay! You guys have survived. Wow. <laughs> the Feywilds. Oh boy. Oh man, I'm gonna have to post the rest of these scenarios in here. There are some I'm I'm really sad we didn't get to, but um, this might be the first time we've accomplished like one task, one complete <laughs> task in an entire episode. I think, yep. yeah, without having to no, do a two parter. We still got to make it out of here, though. Yeah, <laughs> we got a big old battle ahead, and then we, we still got to get through the damn gate. Like, there's still that. We don't even know what's on the other side. Oh. <laughs> you don't All even right. know. Oh well, thank you, everybody, so much. So, Josh, obviously, you will be joining us for this big bad battle next time. So thank you so much for coming on. This is so awesome. 
uh, everybody, uh, I guess uh, let's go around and do an outro because I forgot to last time. Um, but hi, everybody. I have been Celeste, your dungeon master. And I have been Arnadella Thill, played by me, Brittany, your scarred elven warlock. <laughs> And I was Nassim playing your human monk, Sayanor. And I'm Sage, and I play Kara Hilda the Barbarian. <laughs> and I am Josh Perot. I have been your Furbog Randy, uh, and I am the DM for Taking Initiative. Yeah, go ahead and plug. Where can people find you? They know where to find all of us, but how can people find you, Josh? So, me personally, I'm on Twitter at Xyroxis the Beard. That's at X I R O X I S the Beard. I am the current DM for Taking Initiative, another uh, 5e actual play podcast where we had uh, Celeste on as a guest. We've had Sage as a guest. Uh, we need to work on you other two getting on the show as well, please. Um, you can find Take Initiative on Twitter at TI underscore pod. Um, and also, uh, if you're watching this live, this upcoming Monday is the start of an event I co-planned and co-wrote called the Podcast of Waterdeep, which the Venture Maiden is taking initiative and a whole bunch of other groups and guests will be uh, hopping into the new Waterdeep Dragon Heist module. Uh, so feel free to hit that up on the Wizards of the Coast Dungeon Dell feed starting on Monday. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a really fun time. So stay tuned for those episodes. I know Venture Maidens were five out of ten, and uh, Taking Initiative five. is four? Three. Uh, Three. So our episode will be up on September 12th on Wednesday, and yours, I believe, will be on September 14th on Friday. Heck yeah. So stay tuned for that. And thank you all so much for joining us. And you know what you should do until next time? <sighs> Venture, Venture away! away. <laughs> Venture away, everybody. I feel like we take a little bit longer each, each week. time. I'm like, because I'm trying to make eye contact, be like, <laughs> Ready? are we good? Do the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Damn yeah. It, do the All thing. Right. Stop in my.